morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm John Zrolnik from Lane. We're a member of the Coalition for Clean and Safe Ports. I'm going to present to you some highlights uh, of a driver survey. The first and only systematic look at the Clean Trucks program, uh, an incomplete program because of ATA litigation, uh, on port drivers in LA, Long Beach, and Oakland. Previous analyses projected the ultimate failure of a CTP lacking an employee provision. These new data demonstrate that these projections are already coming to pass. As I'll describe, the key consequence of industry litigation is that workers, rather than companies, are being forced to pay for the new clean trucks. Drivers are economically worse off, and the environmental sustainability of the program is in jeopardy. Let me present some findings from this new survey, the largest ever survey of California port drivers. This three-port survey of 581 drivers, sponsored by the Public Welfare Foundation, underscores the need for swift implementation. First, drivers are worse off economically. 75% of LA and Long Beach drivers say their economic situation is somewhat or much worse than pre-CTP. Of Oakland drivers operating new or retrofitted trucks, 25% have declared bankruptcy, been foreclosed upon, and or been evicted. Before the CTP, only 20% of drivers had truck payments. Today, over half of drivers do. 14% of LA and Long Beach drivers have already terminated their new truck leases. And based on the current default rate, we're projecting over 40% of drivers will terminate their leases. This, by the way, is about the same projection that a Daimler executive publicly stated over two years ago. In addition to the impact on drivers' pocketbooks, we're also seeing widespread violations of federal laws. 38% of drivers report working more than 60 hours a week, and 16% say they average more than 70 hours. 97% of LA and Long Beach drivers with truck payments report being prohibited from hauling from an, for another company, belying any notion of true independence. We can't keep on this path. Drivers can't afford the costs of clean truck leases, nor should they have to as workers. These survey results underscore the reality that the LA program, the full LA program, is the only economically and environmentally sustainable model for ports nationwide. These results also clearly point out that industry, not individual drivers, must assume responsibility for truck replacement. That we must immediately and vigorously enforce all unenjoined portions of the program. And that we must work together to secure the long-term sustainability of the environmental goals. I want to thank you for all the work that you and staff have done and your continued leadership on this issue. Uh, I also have copies of the full survey results for all the commissioners and staff, and I can answer any questions that you have. Thank, thank you very you. much. I have a question. Oh, Mr. Yeah, um, John, um, I guess what you're saying is that when this program started, uh, the trucks basically went to companies. The companies then, what, leased them out to the worker? That's exactly right. Who, who's responsible for maintenance of the trucks? Who, uh, pays, who pays for the maintenance of the trucks? Overwhelmingly, it's the drivers. So the, company, the companies don't pay. How, how do the drivers end up paying? <laughs> um, well, as we've seen, uh, the, they, it's, it's a mix of, of things. Sometimes uh, they're paying by digging deeper into their pocket and sacrificing in other areas. Um, you know, we, uh, a number of drivers are reporting uh, missing uh, missing rent payments, uh, having to cut back in other areas, um, and oftentimes maintenance simply isn't happening. And this is what gets to the, to the environmental sustainability of the program, is when, when money is short uh, and maintenance costs are stacking up, the maintenance sometimes just doesn't happen. Well, maybe I need to ask somebody else this question, but I, I would assume that if uh, we uh, sold a truck or gave a truck to uh, a company, the company would be responsible for maintaining that truck. I mean, I don't know who I'd ask about that, but it may, and maybe I need to dig further into this, but uh, who is responsible for maintaining the trucks? Under our concession agreement, the licensed motor carriers that receive our trucks are responsible for the maintenance, and we actually have a program to follow up on that, on that maintenance. I do know that early on, some of our concessionaires brought on employees, and then once the employee um, provision was enjoined, they then immediately, um, you know, turned those drivers into 
um, you know, I guess lessees. They lease the trucks to the drivers. And so there are some concerns. We do have concerns about the maintenance of those trucks because we need that maintenance in order to, you know, assure the um, emissions reductions. Yeah, I mean, John, you made a comment that some aren't being maintained. It would seem to me right. that an obligation of the port would be to ensure that these companies that got these trucks were maintaining these trucks. Do we have any way of ensuring that? Yes, through our, through our follow-up program, and I'll have to, I don't have any information with me, but we can get a report back to the board on what we're finding in terms of our um, maintenance review. I, 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 I do think that uh, we were going to get a report back from the staff on the clean truck program, in particular related to the uh, shifting of some of the older trucks that had been banned, how they are now in recirculation. So if we can um, look in the next uh, couple of meetings to get a report from the staff on the whole issue of uh, what's going on. We know what's happened on the court side, but relative to our going forward on the program, and particularly now the maintenance program, since the program's been underway for a number of years, right. how are our maintenance records showing what's going on and what um, enforcement mechanisms and, and issues are we able to uh, utilize in maintaining and making sure that we're getting the maintenance that we want. Right, and just to give you a preview, at our next board meeting, the first meeting in December, John Holmes is gonna do a presentation on the truck program so we can fold that issue in. He's gonna be presenting on the issue of the class seven trucks and the dray off situation, and some of those dray off situations affect you know, we know some of that stuff is happening by schools. And then at the following board meeting, um, right before um, the holidays, we'll be asking you to adopt an amendment to the tariff that deals with some of those issues. So we'll give you a preview at the first meeting in December and then ask for uh, an action item, your consideration the second meeting. But so, I'll ask him to put in that maintenance issue. So, so John Holmes would be the guy to talk to about particular questions that I have? Yeah. John Holmes is sort of the senior manager responsible for the clean truck program. Yeah, because there's, I don't want to get into it now, but right. there, there's a series of other questions I have, and you know, you've raised some, but I have other questions about this program. Right, right. And let me also say that Chris Cannon, who although he's moved over to another area in environment, right. is also was, uh, was the uh, person who's the project manager. Right, he's, right. E either John or Chris. Uh, let me go on now with the other speaker cards. Uh, call Jimmy Martinez, Armando Aguirre, and Michael Day. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. My name is uh, Jimmy Martinez. I had work at the harbor for 12 years. I have three kids and a wife who depend on me. Uh, before the LA Clean Truck Program, I used to own my truck. The only expenses that I had on my truck was uh, the diesel, registration, insurance, and a regular maintenance on my truck. On a regular basis, I was making $600 a week, working less sometimes than 40 hours a week. They say I wasn't, I wasn't making a a lot of money, but it was enough for me to support my family and pay my bills. Now with these new truck leases, I was paying $683 a week directly to the company, not a bank or a lender. And that was not including the $300 to $400 of fuel. I was working 70 hours a week sometimes and taking as low as $163 a week. What kind of future? can I offer my wife and kids with $163 a week? It's not, I, I think it's not fair for me and all the truck drivers to work that many hours and not being able to afford and pay basic, basic bills. Just, just two days ago, I got a collection letter from the same company I was leasing that truck. They're uh, sending me for collection for supposedly I owe them $1,300 for returning the truck, a truck that I couldn't afford to pay. If we lease these trucks, we pay. If we return them because we cannot afford, we're not getting enough work, we still have to pay. Now that we, um, that we have an incomplete LA, LA clean truck program, our only choice is a bad job or a worse job. What we need is a, a, a full LA clean truck program where professional truck drivers I have my class day with all my endorsements in it. I should be able to decide if I get a good job or a bad job, not a, a good job or a better job, not a bad job and a worse job. Um, truck drivers are important uh, part of this industry and we, we deserve a full 
Clean LA program. Thank you. J Jimmy. Uh, another question here? Yes. Jimmy, uh, yes. Yes, Commissioner. You know, this program that Antonio put together and the ports put together yes. is a good program. The yes. thing that's interrupted this program is the courts. And I just want to make it clear to the truck drivers that it's not the, it's not the mayor, it's not this council, it's a court action right now that is preventing moving forward with a full program. Yes. You know, and, I, and I think it's important for the truck drivers to understand who's standing in your way. You know, it, it's the company and the courts. Yes. N not the poor. I understand. Thank you, Commissioner. Armando Aguirre, who will be followed by Michael Day. <clears throat> uh, good morning, Commissioners. I think it's just a little story about the same. <clears throat> For nine years, I served this uh, great nation in the armed forces. I brought my truck driving skills out here in the civilian world. I too had the American dream in mind. I envisioned myself in a decent job. A job with a decent and honest living, but I end up in a world of greedy and fraudulent people that have no regards for the economical stability of their very own drivers. I am a dad of four children and the only one who supports their basic needs. Food, clothes, diapers, personal hygiene items. And I failed, I failed them to meet those needs. When I couldn't even pay for those basic needs I just mentioned. I was two months behind on my rent and utilities overdue. I had no money to pay for gas, to get to and from work. No money for laundry and the lease goes on and on. My downfall started when I got into this truck leasing program that I now know it is a complete fraud and a, mis and a misclassification of company drivers. I leased a truck I could not even take home or even find work somewhere else to make this truck payment expenses. I talked to them about it and they said, company policy, you cannot take the, the truck. So I worked long, hard hours, day and night, but I just couldn't make enough. I worked 12, 14, 17, and 18 hours a day to try to get a decent check. But that didn't happen. I got checks for 70 hours of work for $200 on that week, and a check for $96 for the next week, and a $3 check for the next following week. I couldn't even cash a check. The check cashing place told me the minimum is $5. I wasn't the only one breaking the 14-hour DOT rule. There are thousands of drivers doing the same just to make ends meet. We had no choice. The truck payments are too high. I want to thank you for listening to me. We all know that the situation is having the full LA clean truck program. Drivers like me shouldn't have to pay for the new truck. Now, I live here in Long Beach, and two of my kids have asthma. I want to drive a clean truck, but I also want to be able to pay my rent. I want to ask you to please keep the situation of drivers in your mind and in your hearts, because we cannot continue like this. Appreciate your time. Thank you.